It's time for Speed 77 Radio's Motorsports Madness. Powered by the staff at Race Chaser Online. Today's racing news, yesterday's racing history. And now, here are your hosts, Jacob Steelman, Tom Baker, and Kyle Magda. Good evening, race fans, and welcome to this brand new Monday night edition of Motorsports Madness here on the Performance Motorsports Network for the first time. And as I always say to start the show, we're glad that you are along for the ride with us. We've got two hours of motorsports conversation to get to tonight, and I'm excited to be back at the Speed 77 roundtable uh, with a host of colleagues, uh, Tom Baker, our uh, senior editor at Race Chaser Online. Com, and we'll be joined in a little bit by assistant editor Kyle Magda and our uh, V8 Supercars and NASCAR correspondent James Pike. But Tom, I want to go to you first because this is a big day. It's a new chapter and I'm ready to kick it off. Yeah, I think we're all ready to kick it off. And good evening, everybody, and welcome to Motorsports Madness, the first ever edition of Motorsports Madness on the Performance Motorsports Network. And uh, we are excited. We've got a full show tonight. We've got three drivers that are going to be joining us throughout the show. Uh, of course, uh, Jeremy Mayfield going to be joining us about uh, 8 o'clock this evening. We've got uh, the World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series winner, Brian Brown from South Saturday night going to be joining us about 8.15 and then about 8.30 or so we are going to be joined by Brandon Jones who was uh, of course a NASCAR Camping World Truck Series racer and also for next year a Richard Childers Racing Development driver is going to be doing some Xfinity Series racing in 2015. So we're pretty excited about our first show. And, of course, we do have a cast of characters here at the round table with us this evening. Uh, we have got uh, James Pike, as you mentioned, Jacob, and also uh, Kyle Magda with us. Joel Sebastianelli, our Indian F1 correspondent, going to be joining us a little bit later on, as well as uh, Turn 5 Live host Stephen Ovens also going to be joining us uh, a little later on in the program as well. Jacob, a lot of stuff going on, of course. Uh, where we always start here on The Madness is we start with NASCAR and if if there wasn't enough going on at Phoenix for you in the NASCAR over the course of the NASCAR weekend, well, I just don't think you were alive. I mean, there's there's enough storylines coming out of that place and going into Homestead and the final round of the chase for all the marbles this coming Sunday. Jacob, the last us, I think, an entire show if we wanted it to. Oh, trust me, it could definitely last us an entire show. At least got half an hour of this show to get it started. Uh, where? Let's see. Wh where do you want to start, Tom? Do we want to start with the fact that Kevin Harvick, who was in a must-win situation, did exactly what I said two weeks ago? He won. Thank you. I'll take another point here. That's three for me out of nine in this chase. You're, um, do, you're going to brag go already. Yes, I'm going to brag already. All right. Um, not even five minutes into our first PMN show, and you're already bragging about picking the winner. It wasn't like you went very far on a limb, but for those who are listening to the Performance Motorsports Network that haven't heard our show before, Jacob is our two-inch limb specialist. When we make our picks at the end of each show about who's going to win the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race, you can always count on Jacob to go about two inches out on a limb and pick the one person that is most likely with the best odds to win. And in this case, it was Kevin Harvick. We all knew that, but Jacob just went first. Yes. Yes, I did. I did get to go first. So anyway, Tom, um, do we do we want to go with Harvick? Do we want to go with Ryan Newman, who well, Harvick his way to a chase spot? <laughs> uh, I mean, where? Hey, there's a lot of Kevin Harvick to go around in this first segment. You you pick. Where do we want to go? There's an awful lot of Kevin Harvick. Yeah, and I know. You know, I know. I know. Harvicking is when you push somebody into the. Um, some of the end of the fight. Well, the, the fact of the matter is I, I modified that term. You can Harvick somebody from inside your car. It's my show, our show, it's, it's our rules, and we're calling it Harvicking. Uh, I, I would definitely, uh, I, I think that, that, look, Ryan Newman obviously made a move at the end of the race that was 
You can call it dirty. I don't believe it was dirty. He didn't intentionally do anything to Kyle Larson. He dove down low. It's the last corner of the race. His season's on the line. He knows he has to pass that car. He dove low exactly like Carl Edwards did. Jacob, when was that? It was a couple of years ago, and I think he was racing Jimmy Johnson, if I'm not mistaken. Wasn't it? 2000 and 2000 and. Eight, I believe at Kansas. Uh, it it yeah. was either 08 or 09. Yeah, um, I mean, the only difference was that Edwards actually, he didn't hit the car when he was coming back up the track. He hit the wall. And, and, and you know, I just, I don't understand all the fuss about what Ryan Newman did, frankly. And I certainly will not allow it to come from anybody who would give Dale Earnhardt any respect because Dale Earnhardt won seven championships doing exactly the same stuff. Yeah, he did. Uh, Kyle Magda, I think Tom and I were discussing earlier today that Dale Earnhardt would have been very, very proud of the move that Ryan Newman pulled. Uh, uh, what say you about all this? Because the, it seems like there's been a lot of dissenting opinions around this roundtable over the course of the last 48 hours. Yeah, you feel for Jeff Gordon, I mean, with what happened there in the end, second best car and good evening, everybody. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with, with Ryan Newman's move at all. You know, like Tom said, last corner of his of his season, possibly, and he has to do something because, uh, you know, I think the lap before Marcus Ambrose and Kyle Larson were were pretty much side by side there, and then Ryan Newman had a chance to get up there and take the spot, and he did that as well. And I mean, you know, you look at both sides of it. You look at Ryan Newman's side. You look at Jeff Gordon's side. I mean, Jeff Gordon, he said himself, had nothing for Kevin Harvick. Uh, second best car today for Jeff Gordon, but this wasn't enough. And, you know, when you look at Jeff Gordon, you think of the last two weeks, you know, second of Martinsville, best car, speeding penalty, almost winning the race. And then, of course, Texas leading late, getting a caution, and then, of course, getting in with Brad Keselowski. So still a lot of things you can play against there. And, and keep in mind, guys, Ryan Newman is the only driver out of the three that are left that does not have a win yet. So... That, that idea of a winless champion, it's still alive and it's strong. And uh, possibly one of RCR's best shots, like you guys said, since, since, la since Dale Earnhardt won in 1994. So uh, it's going to be a great race come Sunday. And uh, I'm excited. To, I'm, I'm really excited uh, for it to play out. James Pike, you're kind of the resident history buff around here. Ryan Newman is RCR's first shot at a championship since Earnhardt won his last in 1994. And you made the co you made the comment earlier today. Uh, he had to have known there was a chance he was going to bump Larson. I mean, like we said, just an Earnhardt-esque move. And are, are we are we surprised? Are we really surprised? I can't say that we're totally surprised, uh, and thank you for bringing me on to the show this week, even though I am a little bit under the weather, but uh, would not miss the first show with the Performance Motorsports Network for the world, so uh, happy to be with you guys. Uh, B, also want to remind you that I still have a 776-point lead on you in the Fantasy Live League, so there's also that if you want to get all uppity about your two-inch looms. And now we can roll back to the actual Newman discussion uh, and to me, I think the most interesting part of this is not necessarily the move in and of itself, but the way Kyle Larson reacted to it. He said uh, after the race, this is from MRN's website, that, uh, and I quote from Larson, it's a little upsetting he pushed me to the wall, but I completely understand the situation, and I can't fault him for being aggressive here. I think a lot of drivers out here would have done something similar if it, they were in that same position. Uh, and to me... I feel like I hear that, and it gives me the impression that Larson uh, might be a little bit more of a racer's racer than most, uh, because there are definitely many, many ways you can go about reacting to this. You can uh, do what Jeff Gordon did last week and try and grab the cuff of uh, the opposing driver's uh, uniform and what have you. Uh, but uh, to me, that's never really been Larson's MO, I don't think. And I, I, I think uh, it shows a lot of maturity on his part that uh, he had the presence of mind to say, you know, it was kind of a dirty move to some degree, but I get it. I understand the situation. And I think in fairness, we could probably safely assume that if Larson were in that spot, he would do the same thing as well. So, 
Okay, so now that we've now that we've covered that fairly accurately, and I might add to what James said by saying Kyle Larson can't really. I mean, what's Kyle Larson going to do? Kyle Larson's tiny. He's not going to walk up to Ryan Newman and pick a fight. That's just not <laughs> yeah. going to happen. I got I got twenty bucks on Newman in that one. Okay, so guys, look, let's just talk Final Four here, shall we? I mean, look at the mix we've got. We've got all three manufacturers represented. Yes. We've got four different teams represented, and none of them are named Our Hendrick. Hendrick Motorsports. How unbelievable is that? RCR made it. We've got Penske Racing. We've got Stuart Haas Racing. And, you know, these, these guys are all very, very aggressive racers, every single one of them. And I think this is really, to me, this is the perfect final four. If you could script it out, this is the perfect final four. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll take that, Tom, and I'll I'll give you this too. Uh, it, it's the perfect final four because we know NASCAR want NASCAR wanted exactly what they got in Phoenix to about the hundredth power at Homestead, and I think we're gonna see. Uh, Shoot, uh, you know, we're thinking about it. We're thinking about nicknames. Uh, Ryan, who was it, Tom, earlier this season that called, or maybe it was last season, that called Ryan Newman the ogre? I I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I but, can't but, remember. <laughs> I, 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 that, sounds like something, yeah, it sounds like something yeah. Kyle Bush would do. Of course it does. But, I, I, you know, not, not, to, not to bring up an old wound here, and, and I have to say, yeah, Kyle Bush, thank you, but. Do, do we not agree that uh, that Ryan Newman kind of bulldozed to, bulldozed his way to a spot in the final four? I mean, li like it or not, it's what we got. And Tom, I don't know if it's helping the ratings. I've not looked at the final TV numbers yet, but I know I would have been excited about it. Well, here's the thing. I mean, you, you know, TV ratings are one thing, but, you know, at the end of the day, you, you just can't worry about TV ratings. This is as good as it gets. If NASCAR wanted a playoff, this is as good as it gets. The only thing I might change is to say next year, only winners allowed. That's it. Only winners allowed. You, in that way, if we get 12 winners, we start with 12. We get 15 winners, we start with 15. And it's not a Ryan Newman rule. And I personally don't mind having Ryan in there without winning, but it seems like that's a sore spot for a lot of people. So if you want to fix that, you just simply say you have to win to get in. Other than that, I think this format's great. I don't think they ought to change a thing. And I can't wait to watch every lap on Sunday because I'm going to tell you what, Homestead has never seen anything like what's about to happen to them on Sunday afternoon. This is going to be an all out throwdown. And you got to remember, there's 38 other guys or 39 other guys that are not at 38, 38 guys and a girl that are not laying yeah. down, not laying down for these guys. So, you know, this is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. And, and I think Danica might take offense at the fact, Tom, that you just forgot about her. So there you go. Uh, Magda, I, I, I'm going to get we'll back to this later at the end, <laughs> at the end of the show uh, when we sit down and do our performance picks one last time for the Cup Series this season. But uh, if, if you had to look at this Final Four, uh, what do you see right now uh, in this Final Four that you're going to be watching come Sunday at Homestead? Well, Jacob, when you look at the four teams and you break them down, I mean, at least from a horsepower stance, you look at Joey Logano and you look at Kevin Harvick, Penske Power, Hendrick Power, and then you look at the other two. You look at Denny Hamlin and Ryan Newman. You have the Joe Gibbs Racing Power and you have the Richard Childers Racing Power. But comparing this year to last year with Joe Gibbs Racing, they were running away with the mile-and-a-half tracks, but... This year they're not, and like I said, it's pretty much it's been a Hendrick-affiliated car or the Penske Brigade going out there and taking the races. And, you know, for Ryan Newman to get it in as well, I mean, we still have the thought of a winless champion. So I think right now it's crazy what's going on. I mean, we're going into Homestead with, with a going to be a new champion, no other champion who has won before will be in this race. So definitely a lot to Love look it. forward to on Sunday and and really, uh, 267 laps, we will have a new Spring Cup Series champion.
Yeah, we will. And I think that's the best part about this. And it's what I'm going to be watching because, you know, we've watched the Penske and the Hendrick cars all season. And who's the only one in either of those camps left standing? Joey Logano. Oh, by the way, Joey. Logano was the highest finisher of the four championship contenders at Las Vegas, which is where most of these teams pull their setups for to take to Homestead. So it, it's going to be fun to keep an eye on. But uh, right now, I believe we're going to take our first uh, caution flag of the evening. But trust me, there is still a lot more time yet to come. We've got more conversation. We'll talk nationwide and truck series action from Phoenix coming up after this because that truck affair was, well, long into the night. First, some business and when we come back more of the madness right after this here on speed 77 radio on the performance motorsports network how would you like to win a brand new corvette larry o's got all the details winyournewcar.com enter america's number one dream car giveaway contest at winyournewcar.com complete the puzzle the fastest and win a new corvette tax-free come on stop dreaming start driving with winyournewcar.com You hear that? That's the sound of America's only sports car. That's right. It's a Corvette. But not just any Corvette. It's your Corvette. It's that who cares if there's traffic part of your day. And this can be you when you come to Cooper Corvettes. With 60 years of Corvettes to choose from, there's always a Corvette in your budget. And they'll service any Corvette you bring in. Cooper Corvettes on Route 1 just north of Quantico and Triangle. Call, click, or visit coopercorvettes.com. Hi, this is Yen Scott from Summit Point Kart in Summit Point, West Virginia. If you're looking for a real racing experience on a real racetrack, come out to Summit Point Kart this weekend. For as little as $25, you can get your racing career started. New this year, Summit Point Kart offers the RX250 capable of over 75 miles an hour. We're open every Friday from 5 p.m. till 9 p.m., Saturday from noon till 10 p.m., and Sunday from noon till 9 p.m. For more information, go to our website, summitpointkartwithak.com, or you can call us at 304-725-5270. Summit Point Kart, your East Coast karting center. In the race of everyday life, it's nice to have the green flag, but drivetrain problems are the pets. A fully remanufactured engine, transmission, or differential from Jack Jasper Engines and Transmissions costs less than a new vehicle and comes with a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide transferable warranty. See JasperEngines.com for details and get the green flag in your race of everyday life. See the boys at Chandler & Sons Automotive, 45977 Old Ox Road in Sterling. Give them a call, 703-437-7300. Did you know that birthday parties help build confidence in kids? Yeah. Did you know that giving kids less sugar before bedtime helps them sleep better? Oh, totally. Did you know that friendly kids have more friends? Everybody knows that. Hey, guys, did you know that most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? I didn't know that. Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right car seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Packers. Vikings. Red State. Blue State. We come from different places. Uptown. Downtown. We come to different conclusions. Half empty. Half full. But no matter how different we are, we're all connected and we can all make a difference. That's why United Way brings people, expertise, and resources together to improve the education income, and health of our communities, the building blocks for a better life. When we live united, our efforts, magnified by others, add up to real change. Children succeed in school, families gain financial stability, the health of our neighbors improves, and suddenly, so do our communities. But real change won't happen without you. Live Live united. United. So let's look beyond our differences. Live Live united. United. One by one, let's make a difference. Let's reach out a hand to one and influence the condition of all. <laughs> Live United. Give, advocate, volunteer. Live United. Sign up today at liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Time to get back to tonight's Motorsports Madness. Here are the only three of a kind that beats a full house. Jacob Steelman, Tom Baker, and Kyle Magda. Welcome back to the Motorsports Madness. Feed 77 Radio on the Performance Motorsports Network. I'm Tom Baker along with Jacob Steelman, Kyle Magda, and James Pike. Around the round table talking racing with you for a couple of hours on a Monday night. And we've been talking NASCAR Sprint Cup. Now, Jacob, let's switch up a little bit and talk some NASCAR Nationwide Series because... There was indeed a nationwide series race, and as a result, the youngest ever NASCAR National Series champion, none other than Chase Elliott, getting it done. Man, I'll tell you what, that kid can wheel a race car. 
Yes, yes, he can. And thank you for not going to the race winner first, because I think Chase Elliott absolutely freaking lootly overshadows that by about a power of 10. This kid just turned 18 years old, or just turned 19 years old, rather, uh, during the summer, and now he's a Nationwide Series champion. Yes. Number two, his dad's a Hall of Famer, and Chase just proved that he's pretty much cut from the same mold. Yes. Number three, he won three times this season. That's more than any Nationwide regular, and the only guys who won more than he did are full-time cup drivers. He's, he was qualified, he went out, he took it by the horns, and he won it. Oh, by the way, that puts Junior Motorsports to the top of the nationwide pinnacle. And uh, I don't know about you, Kyle Magda, but I'm not convinced that JRM, now that they're at the top of the totem pole, <laughs> they're, they're not going anywhere anytime soon. They've shown so much speed this season, and early on I thought Joe Gibbs Racing would take all the races this year because they've been so good. And, you know, with Kyle Busch winning as much as he did last year, and of course, of course, with all the wins he has this year, uh, just it, that whole JR Motorsports organization has stepped up this season with Regan Smith and Chase Elliott as well. So uh, really just I, 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 I was shocked to uh, see Chase Elliott win the championship. I did not expect him to do this good this early, but you proved me wrong and just staying consistent all year round and of course picking up those three victories this season proved crucial for that nine team and as the other drivers as Elliot Sadler Brian Scott Ty Dillon and Regan Smith as well uh, they've had troubles and Chase Elliott has and I, I think I don't think Chase Elliott has won DNF on this season so really has shown the consistency of the nine team and has resulted in a championship so uh, a lot to look forward to for Chase Elliott going into next year probably actually going to stay in Nationwide another year before maybe be in the Cup Series in 2016. So that team has a lot to look forward to uh, come next season. Yeah, they do. And Tom, if you tell me you were surprised, I I'm going to I I'm going to find a pie or something during the next commercial. <laughs> because I, I I don't I don't know, but I I'm going to find one, I promise you, because don't it, I don't know how anybody could have been surprised by this. No, it, it's not a surprise at all, honestly. I mean, even at, even to, to think that he would come in at the Nationwide Series level, we talked about this at the beginning of the year, and I, I will admit that I, much like Kyle, was a little bit skeptical because there's obviously a big adjustment between the levels he's been racing at and the Nationwide Series, but and my, I just questioned whether or not he would pick up all the tracks so quickly, but boy, he started off hot and just really never much cooled down. I mean, you know, when you look at it, the, the 54 car and the 22 car win a lot of the races, but really because of the fact that they, neither of those cars have full-time drivers, they're not going to ever win the championship. So it comes down to, who does the best besides those two cars? And Chase Elliott has been up there running for wins. He's won several times. He's been in the top three, top five. I mean, you know, Chase really has just done a phenomenal job. And I think when you start hearing people like Dale Jarrett, who've been around this sport for probably more years than he would like me to share, <laughs> uh, you know, starting to, uh, you know, complimenting him by saying things like, the feedback he gives, you would think you're talking to a 20 year veteran. I mean, I heard Dale say that on a broadcast not long ago. And, you know, a lot of other people say the same thing. Junior actually thinks he's ready for cup right now. And I would agree with him if there were an opportunity. I think he's going to probably run what they say, maybe five or six or seven next year. But, um, I certainly think that when Chase hits the Sprint Cup Series, he's going to be as much of an instant success there, uh, though obviously the competition level is a little higher, so he may not go out and win a championship his first year. But I would say if you put him in a Hendrick Motorsports car in 2015, he would go out and I, I think he makes the chase next year and contends for a title. So, you know, he's just had a, a, a phenomenal year and he's an exceptional, exceptional talent. Yes. Yes, he is. He is an exceptional talent. And I will go so far as to go from one exceptional talent, James Pike, to another exceptional talent. Uh, because not only did we have an exceptional talent win a nationwide championship, we had an exceptional talent win a truck race on, I don't know, do, do we call it 
Friday night or do we call it the wee hours of Saturday morning? Because that's definitely what it was for Tom and I on, and you as well on the East Coast uh, by the time that race got over with. And it, it, it seemed like that NASCAR just was in a box where <laughs> who they, they've got to be looking at each other going, OK, boys, who didn't pay the power bill here? Really? Well, I guess you could count that as maybe the big takeaway storyline, but I definitely think we need to focus on the fact that Eric Jones, A, is an incredibly talented driver who yes. I think is probably going to follow the footsteps of Chase Elliott, uh, maybe not exactly, but very closely, and B, that Eric Jones absolutely has owned Phoenix the last two years out. Won the race last year, won the race this year, led 114 of 126 laps. Might be the one guy all weekend uh -huh. who could have actually given Horvick a run for his money. <laughs> I was just getting ready to say, Tom, Eric Jones equals Kevin Harvick, perhaps, at least at Phoenix. Does that math add up? Well, I, I don't know if you could quite go that far, but he's certainly establishing a nice pattern. I mean, he's done a heck of a job. And, you know, Eric's, as James said, another one of those talents. I don't know that he's quite as gifted as Chase Elliott, but certainly, you know, he's poised to continue to make a very big impact. And I think is certainly Sprint Cup material, not next year, but in the future, I th certainly think he has that kind of talent. And I would honestly think that, uh, you know, Eric's going to be in demand because, you know, when you look at, when you look at this as a whole, you've got so many of these guys, you know, Blaney's already basically set. I mean, he's with uh -huh. Penske and his track is set, you know, obviously Chase Elliott's set. Um, Eric Jones is set right now, but whether or not, an opportunity comes up in at the sprint cup level for him with that organization remains to be seen. So this is a kid that, you know, a few years down the road, depending on how things fall, maybe looking for a home and maybe, uh, in demand by some other teams. So, you know, it just, it, it's always fun when you see somebody like that come up through and he's a great kid too. Very humble kid, just a lot of fun and, and just gets it done on the track. But, hey, Tom, 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 you forget he's got an opportunity for next year. He's going to be driving the 54 truck. Yes, oh, I know. But every, I'm just yes. saying when we get to Sprint Cup, that's what I'm saying is when he okay. gets, you know, because Gibbs has obviously got a full full house over there. And for I, now. Uh, for now. And, and I don't see any of those guys retiring or going away anytime soon. So depending on <laughs> when Eric I becomes wish. cup ready, no, guys, you know, depending on when Eric becomes cup ready, I'm saying I think, you know, he may be in demand. There may be a bit of a, uh, you know, a bidding war for his services because I do think he is that kind of a talent. But just, yeah, he's got obviously a great opportunity in the, the 54 truck for next year. And, you know, that opens up an opportunity for Bubba Wallace. And I really think you're going to see Bubba in the 11 car in the Xfinity series to replace Elliot Sadler, who, of course, has gone over to Roush Fenway with his sponsor, One Main Financial, for next year's Xfinity season. Um, I, I really believe that that's eventually going to be announced sooner rather than later, probably that Bubba will end up in the 11 car. I would, I would dare say they're probably just working on the funding for that to make that happen right now. But I, I think there's a reason why he is not in the 54 truck. Kyle Magda, I, I, I sense you getting a little frustrated over here because we're talking about the 11, but the 20 is up for grabs, too. And and you've heard the same speculation through the grapevine that I have that Justin Boston's going to be in that car next year. Yeah, nothing has been announced yet. And I know you and I were talking, Jacob, is that he was originally supposed to run the last three truck series races with, with uh, I think, Venerini Motorsports. So didn't really happen in it. I'm not sure what that's leading to, but did run Bristol back earlier in the season and, of course, running the full Arca slate as well in 2014 and picking up two wins. But was it didn't have the luck, and I think he finished fifth in points, so happens. So, I mean, his future in in, is up, and, you know, he has, has the sponsors loop. He ran two races this year, ran Kentucky and Dover in September, so I think, you know, he's a candidate for the 20 car nationwide, so... And keep in mind, guys, I mean, Eric Jones has announced he's running a part-time schedule in the Xfinity Series next year. And that 20 car can all, could possibly also be part-time 
as well because we already have Daniel Suarez in the 18 and possibly Kyle Busch and another driver in the 54, but I'm not sure about Bush yet, but that could happen for sure. There there you go, Kyle. I think you see Kyle Bush and Eric Jones split the I think you see Eric run the races in the fifty four that Kyle Bush doesn't. I think that's what you're gonna see right there. And and we may yet see three full time Gibbs drivers running for a championship. But of course we'll wait for the press releases as James always likes to remind us because we can't uh, we we can sit here and speculate all night, but uh We'll, we'll wait for the written words on the page, and right now uh, we'll also uh, wait and get ready to pop open the wine bottles and grab some cheese out of the fridge, because when we come back from this break, we're going open wheeling. Joel Sebastianelli is going to join us, and oh boy, everyone's dramatic in Formula One right now. Three car teams and customer cars, oh my. After this, it's Open Wheel Central here on Speed 77 Radio's Motorsports Madness, right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. How would you like to win a brand new Corvette? Larry O's got all the details. Enter America's number one dream car giveaway contest at winyournewcar.com. That's right, winyournewcar.com. Complete the puzzle the fastest and win a new Corvette tax-free, delivered to your door. Come on, stop dreaming and start driving with winyournewcar.com. We're growing like crazy and need account reps who know their way around agencies, the Internet, and social media. Got connections? Or do you know how to get to the decision makers? Are you fearless? We need you. Internet radio, or as we call it, wireless mobile radio, is rapidly becoming the place to be with almost limitless income potential. So contact us to get involved with the fastest growing professionally produced group of internet radio stations in the world. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or you can email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You want to ask for Sue. So you finally arrived at the sweet spot in your life. The kids are raised and gone. You have free time, and it's finally time to do something for you. If you've ever considered owning a Corvette but have been putting it off for years, now is the time to act. Isn't this the time to finally get that Corvette you always wanted and drooled and dreamed over? Well, grab the little lady by the hand and take her to Cooper Corvettes. They're conveniently located on Route 1 just off of I-95 and just north of the Marine Corps base. They have lots of pampered and well-maintained Corvettes in inventory. And if they don't have what you want, they'll find it. From classic Stingrays to modern-day cars, Cooper Cooper is your one-stop shop. And speaking of shops, they service what they sell. And even if you didn't buy a Cooper Corvette, they'll service your Corvette anyway. Become part of the Cooper Corvette family. Call them at 703-445-1483. That's 703-445-1483. And on the web at coopercorvettes.com. That's coopercorvettes.com, American pride and countrywide. You wouldn't trust your taxes to an uncertified accountant. So why trust your vehicle to an uncertified technician? When you have to take your car into the shop, look for the blue and white ASE sign. That ASE blue seal means the shop employees technician certified by the National Institute for Automotive Service Excellence. ASE certification is proof that technicians have the knowledge and experience to fix your vehicle right the first time. For more information on finding an ASE blue seal of excellence facility, visit the website at www.ase.com. Hi, this is Carl Edwards here for RAD, the entertainment industry's voice for road safety. You want to make a difference? It's simple. Be responsible. Plan ahead. Designate before you celebrate. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Time now for Open Wheel Central with our resident wine and cheeser, Joe Sebastianelli. Here to pop the cork is Race Chaser Online's managing editor, Jacob Steelman. I'll take that and I will pop the cork because Joel, I think Joel wants something in his uh, little crystal glass over there. Joel... Uh, I tell you what, uh, I've not seen any more theatrics than I've seen in Formula One in a single week in a long, 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 long time. And it seems like everybody's complaining about one thing or another right now. Uh, you know, everybody's irritated, but you and me, it seems like. So uh, what? why is everybody irritated right now? And, uh, you know, I keep hearing third cars and Everybody's mad at Bernie Ecclestone, which is nothing new. It's just a nightmare in Formula One after Brazil. 
Well, the only reason you and me aren't upset about anything is because we're not the ones who have to pay for it. The sport is going into, <laughs> I really don't think it a bit much to say it's going into a state of crisis at this point there are a lot of interesting reports that have come out this weekend and some rather interesting quotes from bernie ecclestone too who's essentially said to the smaller teams don't spend as much he said quote we are giving these teams collectively 900 million dollars and that's enough to survive the way they have been surviving i suggest start running the business like a business rather than a hobby End quote. I, what exactly do you want them to do? With the way Formula One is structured right now, the pay is so slanted in the favor of the bigger teams that the little teams don't get much of anything. They're barely surviving race to race. And I think Sauber is a perfect example of a team that's simply brought in two drivers just to try to pay for things. Pastor Maldonado is another one who say what you want about his driving ability. I'm certainly not bashing any of them, but there's such an emphasis on sponsorship money. And even that at this point in Formula One isn't enough to help these teams survive at the rate that they need to survive. I haven't heard anything about a boycott for Abu Dhabi, and I certainly don't think that it would really be in their best interest to do that. But we've heard some talk about that before. We heard talk about it in Austin, and it mm. seemed as though things had simmered down a little bit to the point where Bernie Ecclestone said that there was going to be a new cost agreement, and the teams were satisfied by that at the time. Not anymore. He's taken a complete 180 back to typical Bernie, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> typical Bernie is back now. And uh, uh, Tom, I just heard him use your favorite line, simmer down. <laughs> well, you know, it's, <laughs> it is what it is. And, you know, Joel, I, I, I agree with everything you're saying so far. I mean, I oh, just, geez, here we go again. What, what, you know, what is it? Me agreeing? No, I said, I agree. I didn't say I disagreed. I agree with everything know, Joel's that's, saying that's so far. Scary. Yeah, it is scary. <laughs> when I agree with Joel, it doesn't happen very often, but I agree. I mean, formula one has got to, They've got to get their collective act together here. I mean, there, there's there's some serious issues, and this is where Joel and I are going to maybe disagree. I think it's time for Bernie to go. The first thing you got to do is get rid of the 84 year old kook, who's such a good <laughs> businessman that he actually paid 100 million dollars to settle a lawsuit that was about what 40 million something like that. I mean, you know, it, it's just, I don't understand. It, it, I don't get what Bernie's trying to do at this point. I think scheduling the show against the NASCAR Texas race was absolute insanity. And not because I'm a NASCAR fan or not a Formula One fan or whatever the case, but just because out of all the dates that they could have picked, why would you split the crowd between the two shows? You could have had all the people going to both shows. Now you've got people trying to pick. And, and I don't agree that it's a completely different crowd. There were a lot of people that I talked to that were at the NASCAR race who would love to have gone to the F1 race, but they couldn't go to both. They got season's tickets to the NASCAR deal. So what are you going to do? Yeah, I don't think that was very smart on Bernie's part at all. And it, the list goes on and on for the things that he's done. And I think looking ahead to 2016 is where things get even more interesting after what we've heard. There was a report from Paul Weaver in The Guardian that says that the struggling outfits have simply been told that there's no more money on the table and that we're going to be almost definitely moving toward customer cars in 2016. They've never had a history in the sport, customer cars. Uh, gone are the days when smaller teams, Lotus, uh, Jordan, uh, just a few that come to mind. All of these smaller teams, even Williams for a very long time, uh, there's just no history of customer cars and it Appears as though that's what we're moving on to. Red Bull is being asked to field a third car, reportedly, even though Bernie has steadfastly denied that, as Ferrari has been asked to do so as well. So the way we're looking right now, there may be a big shift up in 2015, but 2016 is now where everybody's eyes are set because something has to be done. And it may be something that will be a seismic shakeup for Formula One going forward because the sport simply cannot survive the way it's structured right now. Geez, yeah, that's about the fourth time in four shows, Joel, that I've heard you use the word seismic shakeup. And when you use those words, I know you're worried because you don't just get frustrated over 
for any little thing. If if you're wound up, it's about something big. Uh, and and I, I'm I'm interested here because uh, you know we we talk about there's no place for customer cars. Well, apparently Bernie seems to think there's no place for little teams because Caterham's trying to make it to Abu Dhabi via crowdfunding, and Bernie basically told them to go find themselves a hole to fall in or something like that. <laughs> yeah, well. You know, with all due respect to Caterham's efforts, I don't really see that crowdfunding going very well in the first place. I think Bernie is way off to slam one of his teams like that because it's very much a part of his policies, along with several other things in the management of that team, which has been completely botched all throughout the season and even before that. You know, I, with all respect to their effort, I don't really see any reason you would want to throw money at Caterham if you think that that is a good way to spend your money. I've got some oceanfront property in Arizona and a bridge I'd like to sell you as well. It's just <laughs> a team that doesn't really seem to be going anywhere. I think that Marusha could survive into next season under new ownership, under a new name. I think that there's a lot more there than there is at Caterham. Something important to remember, too, is if one of these two teams butts out, but particularly Marusha, Caterham, if they were to move on to next season would inherit the points, or not the points, rather, the money, the payoff from the point standings that Jules Bianchi scored. Since Marusha would be off the table, they would actually get more money. So it'll be interesting to see as we go along whether one or both of those teams will be able to make it back into the sport or whether they're both fooled. I think my money, I think Caterham's absolutely a goner. As for Marusha, definitely could be back next year, but still way too early to tell on that. Rooting for them both, nonetheless. Oh, absolutely. I don't want to see three-car teams in Formula One. I think it's a terrible idea, and it's just one of those things where the Bernie's looking at this as the rich getting richer and the poor getting poor enough that they're going to get driven out. And if we're talking about the rich getting richer, can I uh, can I comment that once again the Silver Arrows are rich and everybody else is uh, fighting for table scraps, Joel? And I want to give a call to Nico Rosberg because he did what he needed to do to keep his uh, Silver Arrow in this championship fight headed to uh, what everybody's affectionately calling now Abu Double into a couple of weeks' time. Uh, th this is going to be fun. This is going to be a whole lot of fun. Fun but unnecessary. Another thing you can add to the list of things to gripe about in Formula One. At this point in the season, I think there's absolutely no doubt that Lewis Hamilton is the man who deserves to be the world champion. With the season he's had, so many victories compared to Nico Rosberg. He has consistently performed better than Nico mentally and also just in terms of finishing as well. Up 17 points. You know, Nico Rosberg, if he wins the title single point style in Abu Dhabi, I think it'll get a lot more respect than if it has something to do with the double points gimmick as we move forward. Now, to take a look at where they stand now, with Lewis Hamilton up 17, remember that it's 25 points for a victory, 18 for second normally, but that's going to be doubled to 50 and 36. So at this point going forward, if Rosberg is first, Hamilton just needs to finish second. And in the 15 races that Mercedes AMG Petronas has won this season, in 12 of them, they have finished one too. So the odds certainly seen that barring a retirement, which happens in Australia, Great Britain, and Singapore, those three Grand Prix, barring a retirement, you would think they're almost definitely going to finish 1-2 in some order. If Rosberg is second, Hamilton will need to finish off the podium in fifth. If Rosberg is third, Hamilton needs to be sixth, and so on and so forth. If Nico Rosberg is any lower than fifth, no matter what, Lewis Hamilton will be the champion. So he has to go out there and win because the odds of Lewis Hamilton finishing anything but second if Frostburg was to finish first, barring car trouble, you would think that it would be uh, certainly Lewis Hamilton's to win moving forward. The odds are definitely in his favor, but anything can happen. And for better or for worse, double points definitely does add a little extra to the equation too. But Joel, now remember, Lewis Hamilton's the one that's had all the car trouble this season. Uh, Nico Rosberg's been about flawless on the mechanical side. Lewis is the one who's been snake bit. I, I mean, oh boy. 
This is very true. Lewis Hamilton has had three retirements this season, Canada, Australia, and Belgium. In the Canada race, uh, Nico Rosberg's brakes were actually going out, and he's lucky he survived that and finished second behind Daniel Ricciardo. The two times we've seen Nico Rosberg out were Great Britain and in Singapore, uh, both victories for Lewis Hamilton. So it is three to two. There have been more problems on Lewis's side, especially when you factor in the a horrible race for poor Nico at Singapore with electrical failures right from the start. Wasn't even able to start from the grid on that one. Had to start from the pit lane and was pulling up the rear for almost the entire race that he was out there before we had to retire in the first third of that event. So I would say it's a little bit closer to even. I just think that Lewis Hamilton's team is he's been more on point in that machine than Nico Rosberg has been in his. Not by much. But I do know who should be the world champion, I think, uh, based on the entire body of work. Whether or not he will be will be a different story. But it would be really cool to see Nico Rosberg join his father, Keke Rosberg, the 1982 world champion, as a father-son duo as world champions in Formula 1. I think that that would be a really cool storyline going forward. But definitely the deserving team, Mercedes-AMG Patronus, the class of the field. They've been phenomenal, and what a season it's been right up there with Ferrari's endeavors and anyone else who's been simply on point every single race for the entire season. One of the best efforts in F1 history, for sure. Yeah, Mercedes has been on it, and we'll see which of the two uh, takes the title in Abu Dhabi. More Open Wheel Central with Joel Sebastianelli and the rest of the crew right after this. Uh, it's Motorsports Madness on the Performance Motorsports Network. How would you like to win a brand new Corvette? Larry O's got all the details. In the Pits Media is proud to present its newest partner, WinYourNewCar.com. That's right, you now can enter the number one American Dream Car Contest giveaway at winyournewcar.com. Complete the puzzle the fastest and win a new Corvette tax-free, delivered to your door. Come on, stop dreaming, start driving with winyournewcar.com. Did you know that birthday parties help build confidence in kids? Yeah. Did you know that giving kids less sugar before bedtime helps them sleep better? Oh, totally. Did you know that friendly kids have more friends? Everybody knows that. Hey, guys, did you know that most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? I didn't know that. Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right car seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hands can do incredible things. They made every sound in this piece of music. But nothing compares to using them to help save a life. If an adult suddenly collapses, call 911, then push hard and fast in the center of their chest until help arrives. It's called Hands Only CPR, and it's recommended by the American Heart Association. Visit handsonlycpr.org today. A message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. Car problems? You can trust your local Cotman man. Cotman has a 40-year history as a leader in car repair and making happy, satisfied customers. Whatever's wrong with your car, SUV, or truck, Cotman will check it out free using state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment. Don't take chances with your car. Bring it to Cotman and let your local Cotman man show you why they are America's transmission and total auto care experts. Visit Cotman.com to download money-saving coupons from Cotman. Real service, real fast. You know that phone call is going to come at the worst possible time, right at the end of the game. Fourth quarter, fourth down, and one yard to go. They're piling up, but you can't watch that. you got to get that car off the road. This could have been prevented if you have taken advantage of Cotman's free TransCheck 21. Here's a chance to have us look at your car and head off any problems that could happen that could interrupt that game. Again, it's a free check. Come see us. See Leonard and the fine folks at Cotman of Manassas, 9113 Mathis Avenue in Manassas. Give them a call at 703-365-7200. All I wanted to do was just pick up a guitar and sing praise songs. From IamSecond.com Well, when I got to 17, I was playing in After Hours bars, just in a bunch of trouble. Grammy Award winner Michael W. Smith Smoking that first joint and feeling so guilty about it. From there, it was LSD, and your compass sort of just like disappeared. I knew where I belonged. I just couldn't get out. I was very depressed. I went on the floor and just began to shake. And I was just weeping. I was weeping. And I just began to cry out for God. 12.30 at night, on the linoleum floor of my kitchen, the God of the universe came and wept with me on that floor. I know where my hope lies. It's not being a rock star. I'm a son of the high king of the universe. 
Watch Michael's story at IamSecond.com. Let's throw the green for Open Wheel Central on Motorsports Madness. Back to Jacob, the crew, and the only racing insider to ever use Snuggies for Dogs in a conversation about IndyCar, Joel Sebastianelli. The Snuggies for Dogs reference returns to the madness. Welcome back to Open Wheel Central. And Joel, yes, we are never going to let you live that one down, just for the record. (laughs) I didn't think you'd ever let it die. I didn't think it would move forward quite like this. But I don't take back anything I've ever said. No, no, you don't. Uh, and, and considering uh, that the Snuggies for Dogs reference was uh, in uh, talking about IndyCar, let's talk about IndyCar for a second because we got a few bits on that front as well, uh, namely one that I'm really excited about, and that's the fact that A.J. Foyt is expanding to two cars for the first time full-time since 2002 next year, and one of my favorite rookies last season to watch is going to be driving that 41 car. Hello, Jack Hawksworth. This is great for Jack Hawksworth. He's really proved himself the last couple of years. Won the Star Mazda Championship in 2012. <laughs> the majority of the races that season and then in Indy Lights with Schmidt Peterson Motorsports in 2013 one at St. Petersburg one at Baltimore and one at Toronto as well at a formidable season there and moving forward in his rookie season with Brian Herta Autosport impressed on the very first weekend at St. Petersburg one of his favorite tracks and had it not been for an incident about two-thirds of the way through that race, a stack up up front that he got caught up in. He very well could have finished in the top 10, maybe even a little bit higher. Uh, finished sixth and had his only podium of the season the next uh, the next day, rather, in the Houston doubleheader, a sixth and that weekend, sixth at Toronto. A couple other top 10s as well, including at the Indy Road Course, where he read for a little while, and at Milwaukee as well. So he's proven to be very strong on all three different track types the IndyCar Series races on. So I think it's a big steal for him moving forward and a big steal for AJ Foyt Enterprises as well. Takuma Sato struggled a little bit last season, but it's the first time in 12 years they've been a one-car team. And now that they're back to being at two cars, I think think this is a team that could really be moving forward and challenge for a victory or maybe even more than that with both of their drivers. I think Sato, as long as he's driving with his good head on his shoulders and, you know, he's known to get a little bit over aggressive at times, although it's also his greatest asset. So I think when he can tune that down, get up front, did have two poles last season. He could be in the mix and wouldn't surprise me to see Jack Hawksworth in the mix for a couple podiums and maybe even a victory as well. Up until Takuma Sato had won last and at Long Beach, it had been since 2002, Eric and Dare at Kansas. So it had been that long since AJ Foyt's team had won an IndyCar race. So this is a team that after struggling for a little while has really gotten back on board and it's going to be a very strong two-car effort in 2015, no doubt about it. Oh, I think it's going to be great. And Joel, just real quick, I'm curious to... Uh, to hear what you think about this, but I actually think, you know, usually we talk about a veteran helping a rookie. I think this could be the other way around, believe it or not. I actually think that Jack Hawksworth is going to help Takuma Sato in a way for 2015. Just from what I've seen from Hawks' driving style, I feel like that might be the key to uh, to helping Taku t- tune that over-aggressiveness down just enough to where you get that balance and then he becomes dangerous. I think anytime you have a teammate in racing, both guys have to learn off of each other. And the way they learn can be in different ways. If you're a a seasoned veteran and you've got a rookie joining alongside you, you know, there's some things that you can learn from the rookie. Just as as a rookie, there are plenty of different things that you're going to be learning from that veteran alongside you. So I think they definitely can uh, maybe bounce things off with each other. It's all about communication. They These two guys have to communicate if these two teams are going to move forward. And if they can do that, I think it can strengthen the personal relationship between the two, at least as much as it can between two teammates who, at the same time with the way the dynamic of the sport is, are also rivals in a sense. But I think for Takuma Sato, it maybe lights a fire under him a little bit where he knows that the results have to be consistent. Not that he didn't know that anyway, but I think having a teammate there, the Everyone from the media to even those inside the organization are going to be looking at the numbers between these two drivers. And outside of a fifth, the second day at Toronto, a fourth and a a, uh, sixth, the final two weeks of the season at Sonoma and Fontana, it's really been a season of far more downs than ups for Takuma 
Sato after it started so promising at St. Pete with a pole. Uh, his season went downhill really in the middle stretch. So I think last year people thought Takuma Sato would really break out, didn't quite do that. So now at this point, I think it could be now or never for Takuma Sato too if he really wants to make his stamp on this series and keep moving forward. So really important year and a really important opportunity for both guys and a team that's only getting better. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, uh, all right, Joel. So we've got uh, Jack Hawksworth going to AJ Foyt. Of course, uh, I want to talk about this a little bit more now. The IndyCar schedule uh, was released uh, just a couple weeks ago now, and I, everybody's still kind of sifting through that. And you and I have talked about this a little bit, and you're really a fan of the way this worked out. I don't know that I'm crazy about it yet, but I guess I could learn to like it. I'm a little bit disappointed that Milwaukee wasn't able to fall uh, somewhere about like what Pocono did, but of course Pocono doesn't want the whole July summer heat sort of deal. So I guess we either way we just have to live with it, but at least we really didn't lose any tracks for the 2015 schedule. I can take a little bit of solace in that. Yeah, I think so, too. I wouldn't say that I'm a big fan of the schedule, but I think that given the options that IndyCar had to work with, it worked out the best that it could. Now, what's really strange is that the season for the Mazda Road to Indy guys, Indy Lights, and all of the lower divisions are going to finish the season at Laguna Seca in September. While IndyCar, you know, God forbid they race after Labor Day, right? So now the, the season for IndyCar will end on the 30th, and there's still going to be another couple weeks where everyone else, all the young guns are going to move out to Laguna Seca. I hope in the future that means that Laguna Seca could be headed back on the schedule. It's where CART please. ended their seasons for a little while in the 90s. So, uh, exactly, please, please listen to all of us. We'd love to have that back on along with several other tracks. A couple things that stand out to me. First of all, great to have Brasilia on the schedule to kick things off in March 8th, but with a two-week buffer in between up to the March 29th, Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg, IndyCar really didn't do enough to build on the part of the racing season where there isn't all that much going on. January, February, and March, things are very slow until F1 starts to pick up in March and the, the sports cars come back on a more regular basis. It's really NASCAR and that's it. So, you know, granted, I think we knew in the weeks before the schedule came out that Abu Dhabi probably wasn't going to be on, but I would love to see maybe an international portion of the schedule, which IndyCar says they still want to do moving forward. Now, it doesn't mean that they need to copy the CART model or copy some sort of Formula One model. It's a very good thing they're not Formula One, I think, as we've seen with the way both of these series have gone uh, in, over the course of the last few seasons especially. But international expansion could really be big, and it would be huge to utilize that empty space between the Rolex 24 or in the typical March beginning to the season. If you remember, CART used to to make stops in Mexico, Canada, Germany, Australia, Japan. And, you know, it, it's a little bit rough on the American audience, some of those times that you would be racing. But I think to have a few of those races before, if we can get them in warm weather, maybe even out in California, somewhere where the climate would be a little bit more preferable that time of year, I think it would be really good for IndyCar globally. And it would be really good in this country because there's nobody else fighting with them for those ratings in those time slots at that time of the year. Yes, absolutely agree. So international expansion. Hopeful that IndyCar continues that. Uh, I I'm really hopeful for that, actually. And I, I can think of a few different tracks just in my head. And actually, you brought one of them up, Japan. I'd love to see him go back to Twin Ring Motegi at some point uh, along the way, Joel. Uh, but, you know, I I'm sitting here looking across the row. Tom, I I'm, j I'm seeming to remember something. I'm kind of scratching my head. Oh, wait, I forgot. There's one more piece of news. Actually, it, it, it might just be the biggest piece of news all night. No, actually, it's not. But go ahead anyway. <laughs> oh, Joel, um, you, your Indy 500 field expanded by one earlier this week. Guess what? Jay Howard's in a Brian Hurd auto sport car. Woo! Yeah, this is a move that's a little bit surprising, but great to see Jay Howard's career revitalized a little bit here. They're going to start off with the Indy 500, but if they can find a little bit more money to throw at it, they could be racing more races this season. If you go back to 2006, when he was with Sam Schmidt Motorsports, he was the Indy Lights champion. Won two races that season, uh, spent another couple years in Indy Lights, and outside of an 
opportunity with Roth Racing in 2008 and uh, then a brief return with Sam Schmidt in 2011 and a couple buffer races in the middle sandwiched in between with Sarah Fisher Racing. It's a guy who's only raced about 12 races in IndyCar, hasn't really had the opportunity, and he's always been in some ways in second rate equipment. So we haven't really been able to see that talent shine. He was not somebody I had on my board at 33 years old that I would have thought we'd see starting in the Indy 500 this year. But great to see him get backing from green one. He'll be racing with Brian Hurd at Autosports. First time back at IMS since 2011 in anything. Anybody who can fill the field up to 33 and then some is all right with me. And I think for Jay Howard, it's a really cool story. And I think we'd all love to see him running up front because he just you know some guys get the breaks in their careers and, and some guys don't and that's just the way life goes you know sometimes it's not always fair there's simply not enough cars and not enough money to go around to get everybody involved but for Jay Howard the ball never really bounced in his direction but he'll be rolling off the line in theory in the field of 33 so a great ad for the Indy 500 and a great ad for Brian Herta Autosport as well yeah I think it was a great ad for uh, Brian Herta and the team, because we know Jay Howard can race on ovals. So, uh, boy, it, it, it's going to be something to keep an eye on. Uh, Joel, as always, appreciate you coming on for this edition of Open Wheel Central. Looking forward to seeing what you can come up with for next week, because at the rate we're going, Formula One might decide to, to give us all a heart attack before Abu Dhabi and, I don't know, decide that this customer cars thing isn't such a bad idea. Please, no. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, if they do, I'm going to be giving you guys a lot more material for the intros to these segments. Oh, boy. Uh, I, I don't think anybody really wants to see that. going to be very interesting to see which direction Formula One heads. But for now, all eyes on Abu Dhabi in a couple of weeks. So great to be on the show as always. And wherever you may be and whatever racing you may be watching this weekend, be sure to enjoy it. We're taking care of some business right now, but when we come back, get ready because Jeremy Mayfield joins us on the horn live here on The Madness. That's, you know, it's guys like him who make this show fun, and it's the reason we call it The Madness. Right after this, we hear from Jeremy Mayfield on what he's up to nowadays. You're listening to Speed 77 Radio on the Performance Motorsports Network. How would you like to win a brand new Corvette? Larry O's got all the details. WinYourNewCar.com, enter America's number one dream car giveaway contest at WinYourNewCar.com. Complete the puzzle the fastest and win a new Corvette tax-free. Come on, stop dreaming, start driving with WinYourNewCar.com. We're growing like crazy and need account reps who know their way around agencies, the internet, and social media. Got connections? Or do you know how to get to the decision makers? Are you fearless? We need you. Internet radio, or as we call it, wireless mobile radio, is rapidly becoming the place to be with almost limitless income potential. So contact us to get involved with the fastest growing professionally produced group of internet radio stations in the world. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or you can email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You want to ask for Sue. You hear that? That's the sound of America's only sports car. That's right. It's a Corvette. But not just any Corvette. It's your Corvette. It's that who cares if there's traffic part of your day. And this can be you when you come to Cooper Corvettes. With 60 years of Corvettes to choose from, there's always a Corvette in your budget. And they'll service any Corvette you bring in. Cooper Corvettes on Route 1 just north of Quantico and Triangle. Call, click, or visit coopercorvettes.com. You wouldn't trust your taxes to an uncertified accountant. So why trust your vehicle to an uncertified technician? When you have to take your car into the shop, look for the blue and white ASE sign. That ASC blue seal means the shop employs technicians certified by the National Institute for Automotive Service Excellence. ASC certification is proof that technicians have the knowledge and experience to fix your vehicle right the first time. For more information on finding an ASC blue seal of excellence facility, visit the website at www.ase.com. My very first movie, it was called um, British Terabithia, and that was a film that a lot of kids loved. From IamSecond.com. It felt very cool in my heart to know that I did something nice. Actress Bailey Madison. I don't want it to be about me, I want it to be about um, God. Even though you have an earth father, he is your father, that you can say to him, God, I'm not feeling too well today. Or if it's just 
you know, little things like, I, I feel homesick here. I need you, Lord. I need, I need to feel happiness in my heart. The most important thing is you have to have hope. You have to have faith. God is with you, and God is with you every step of the way. If you give yourself to God and you say, I'm ready to commit myself to you, you will know that God is watching you. He looks at me and goes, I'm very, very happy with what you just did. My name is Bailey Madison, and I am second. You're listening to Speed 77 Radio on the Performance Motorsports Network. Now back to Jacob, Tom, and Kyle on Motorsports Madness. Welcome back to tonight's Motorsports Madness. It is a Monday night of motorsports conversation right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. I'm Tom Baker along with Jacob Seelman and Kyle Magda. And we are now going to welcome our very first guest ever on Motorsports Madness on the Performance Motorsports Network because it's our first week with PMN. And I couldn't think of anybody that I would look forward to more to chat with and have some fun with on the madness tonight than Jeremy Mayfield. Jeremy, welcome to the program. And man, I just got to tell you, it has been so cool to watch what you've been doing with the whole take it back and, and all of the short track racing that you've been into. Uh, that's, that's our wheelhouse here on the madness. We just love the short track stuff. And, uh, I, I've seen you race the modified a couple of times and now you've got the dirt late model. It just looks like you're having a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you having us on too. And, um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun this year. It, it's been a good year and we've, uh, you know, run a lot of races and we've got, we got a lot more uh, to look forward to in the future, and, and hopefully uh, hopefully we'll get a win here pretty soon and, and start winning a lot of these races. Talk a little bit about the genesis of this whole thing, Jeremy. How did this all get started for you? Because it seems like you went from a couple of opportunities in a modified to some Pro Cup stuff, and I think you might have done some payment late model stuff somewhere along the way, and now the dirt late model. Um, you're doing a little bit of everything and a lot of many things. Um, talk about how this whole thing got started for you. Yeah, well, I've been real fortunate, you know, and, and being able to uh, get some good people around me, and, and Aaron Thomas is one of them. He's kind of the one that who's been spearheading all this thing, and putting it together and we're working on our own team and, and you know, we just, um, it's just a building process. You know, you got to build a thing and, and uh, turn it into something. And that's what we've been trying to do all year is just basically build a good race team. And, and we've, you know, we, we just want to run a lot of races, you know, a lot of different stuff and just run all across the country and, and just, just go back racing again and do what I love to do. Well, you're certainly doing it. Um, talk about the, uh, the modified stuff that you're doing, because I'm really into the modifieds uh, being from up north, which is obviously modified country up there in New York and New England, and even down here in the south as well with the Wheel and Southern Tour and the Coma Unwind uh, Tour, which I know you've run. Uh, that's where you've been concentrating your efforts. Uh, talk about running the modified a little bit for us. Yeah, the modified's been really fun. You know, we've... Uh... You know, when I was running a cup, I always watched them race and never really got a chance to, to drive one or be around them that much. But now that I've been around them and been driving them, they're just a lot of fun, you know. And, and Coma's done a great job with, um, you know, putting the deal together with the Southern Modified Series. It's just a, just a great series, a lot of fun. And, and next year's even going to be better. And, and um, But I really love doing it. And I love the way the cars drive. And, you know, I'm racing against uh, Bert and Tim and all those guys that, uh, that run it. Uh, Bowman Gray every week and, and all that stuff and just been a lot of fun. It's been really one of the funnest years I've had really in racing. Jeremy, I got the chance actually to see you uh, at, at Orange County when I came down to cover that event last month. And uh, just the smile on your face, how loose you were around that car, and just uh, so, some of the moves I saw you make during that 125 lap coma tour race. Uh, how much fun was that track to drive for you? Because it just looked like you were having a blast out there, and it looked like you could put that modified a whole lot of places that uh, maybe some of the other guys weren't necessarily comfortable with going over the course of the event. Yeah, you know, our car's been really good, and we've, we've worked hard on it all year, and, and we've got a Dodge motor in it, which is different than everybody else, and, and the thing just handles great. And, and like you said, that Orange County race was a lot of fun for us because – at the end of the race, we were like uh, two and a half, three tenths quicker than than the leader for the last last twenty eight laps. We just uh, got messed up on some track position early on, but um, overall, it's just been a we've got a great team we're building here and the great cars. And um, I don't know, it just keeps getting better. And you're talking about having fun, you know. It's, it's the, the modified series is just 
I don't know, it's just uh, pretty low-keyed and, and not a lot of pressure like I was used to in the past. And um, you just go race and have fun again. That, that's what our whole deal is going to be about. And, and we're striving to build this team around that. We're not a lot of politics. And, and uh, we're just racing and have fun and doing it the way we want to do it and not, you know, just be a puffing on a string somewhere. And looking at that for you, uh, talking about building this team, you're getting set to head to one of the biggest modified races uh, of the season, uh, head into the Wall Stadium for the Turkey Derby here coming up. Uh, that's one of those races where it just seems like nobody can go to that race and not uh, not come away talking about it in some form or fashion. How excited are you to uh, to go up to New Jersey and run that race here coming up? Yeah, I'm really excited about that, and, and that's going to be a deal where um, we're taking our guys, but I'm going to be running um, <clears throat> Dave Brigatti's car up there that <clears throat> I've run several times this year in the in the Cola Series, and uh, he's got great equipment and great cars, and he, he's from, from up north, and um, I figured it'd be better to drive his car than go up there and take ours from down here, and, you know, uh, being from the south, I know the, the northern guys kind of get uh, get sideways a little bit with that, but Dave's, Dave's a great guy, and, and um, like I said, he's got good equipment, and we kind of balance our uh, – deal out when we go up there and race with the with them guys and I'm really excited about that. I know that's a big race and a lot of people uh, you know, follow it and, and, and go to it and they say no matter what the weather is, you know, it's still a packed house and um, hopefully we'll be able to go there and put on a good show for them. Uh, Jeremy, you raced the modifieds in the south this year. Why the decision to go up north to run the Turkey Derby? Well, you know, it's um it's a big race and and I love racing the modifieds and and actually, um, one of our guys that's been helping us, uh, Hunter Smith, he's uh, uh, he's from up there, and, and he was telling me about it, and he's like, man, we should go up there and run. It's a huge race. And we just started, started talking about it and then figured, uh, you know, I heard Ray talk about it in the past. You know, it's his kind of home track, and uh, it'd be great to go up there and win in uh, uh, his little area there, you know, because I know he used to race modifies and all that stuff. And it's it just a lot of things fell in place for us to do that, and, and uh, just looking forward to getting there. Jeremy, we've started to see so many different things from you, uh, from like we talked about, the uh, Dirt Late model, the Modified. You've really started to build, doing a whole bunch of different things here in the latter part of the 2014 season. Obviously, looking forward to carrying some momentum uh, towards 2015. Uh, can you give us any indication as to what uh, might be on your agenda for next year yet, or are you guys just kind of taking it one day at a time? You know, we're kind of just taking it one day at a time, but we, we know what we want to do and where we want to be, and that's, um, you know, we want to really focus on um, the modified stuff and, and the dirt car. You know, we want to, you know, really try to get in and start running the big dirt, dirt races, you know, the Lucas Oil races, the World Outlaw, you know, late model races, and, and just kind of getting, uh, you know, getting a feel for that and see where we stand and where we stock up and, and just kind of head that direction, you know. That's where I, that's where I really want to be in, in the future is running, running one of those two series, if not both, or just travel around maybe and just run all the big races, you know, whether it's a Lucas Oil or a World Bout Law race, and just race and have fun and try to try to cover the whole country and, um, you know, see all the fans out there that's just been uh, been awesome to me and, and uh, you know, just show that, uh, that we can come back. And, and like I said, that's where the take it back thing came from is we're taking the lights back and going racing again and, and not letting anybody stop us or anybody uh, hold us back. And, you know, that, that's the whole deal with this year, and if not just this year but the future on ahead of us you know is we're going to race uh, the way we want to race and and uh, where we want to race and just go from there i was going to ask you about that uh, jeremy because uh, the ta the take it back uh, slogan is one of the things that uh, we've seen you guys push really hard all season long and you really answered it right there uh, so uh, looking at this now uh, obviously i know you said you're taking it one race at a time but uh, are we potentially going to see you run for this coma championship in 2015 yeah, I think so. You know, we've run all the races this year, and we, we've—I think we're like top five in the points, fourth or fifth in the points. And uh, you know, it'd be cool next year now that we got our feet wet and know what know what it, uh, you know, what it's all about and how those guys race. I feel like we can come back and and definitely uh, still got a chance to win one more this year, but definitely could um, hopefully, you know, win a few races and win the championship next year would be great. And uh, we've been so close. You know, we we've, we've led a bunch of laps in the series, and we, you know, should have won you know several races with just little things that bit us or. You know, just just trying to get used to how the series works, and you know, the pit stops and all that stuff has probably got us more than anything. But we, uh, you know, we've had good cars, and we know we can run good, and we know we can, um, you know, stand for the championship next year for sure. 
Well, we'll be excited to watch that, Jeremy, and, and also to watch it with the dirt cart, too. That's a neat thing that you're doing with that. And uh, I know that you can't do any of this alone. So uh, we love to give our drivers an opportunity to give the shout outs and thank yous and make sure that they hit everybody that they need to that helps make it happen for them. So uh, here's your opportunity, buddy, to to uh, share whichever, whatever you'd like to. Yeah, well, you know, first of all, obviously, Coma, uh, you know, reached out and, and helped us, uh, you know, get through the year in the Modifieds and probably going to see them on the dirt car next year. And, and you know, we just got several people that, that's helped us. Aaron Thomas, and, uh, um, you know, he's the one that's kind of really spearheaded this whole thing and put it all together for me. And, and you know, just got a great bunch of guys that are just working hard to trying to make all this happen. And, and you know, we're obviously needing uh, to run where we want to run and be where we want to be. We're, we got to have some more partners that come on with us and help us do this thing. So we're obviously um, – Every day, we've got our ears are open to anybody that may want to be interested in, in helping us get through all this stuff and, and get to where we need to be as far as resource wise. And um, so, anybody that um, out there listening, we uh, definitely would would love to have some more partners with us here. Well, Jeremy, we uh, we appreciate you taking some time to be on the madness with us here tonight. It's been a ball to talk to you, and we definitely wish you the best through the season. We're excited about everything that you're doing. We're huge dirt fans, and we're really big modified fans. So uh, we cool. hope to uh, be, be able to see you along down the road here at the tracks. And uh, like I said, man, just keep digging, keep doing what you're doing, and have fun because uh, it's, it's been pretty cool to watch and love all the the media stuff that you're doing too. Right, well, thank you. And, and and what's cool about this whole deal is that, you know, I'm able to work in the shop, work on the cars every day, and, and got some, like I said, good friends of mine that helped me, and, and they're right there with us. And we're, we're sitting at a, at a gas station right now so I can shut the truck off, but we've been testing today at a Carolina Speedway in a dirt car. And nice. It's just been fun again. I'm, I'm actually driving the truck and, and working on it with along with those guys, and, and they, uh, you know, there's three of us on our team right now, and the other one's, he's helping his wife move or he'd be here. That's what's cool about it. We're not... We're not, um, you know, nothing's too big or too small for us. We handle it all. Well, good luck with all of it, Jeremy. And we'll uh, definitely look forward to talking to you some more throughout the season here on Motorsports Madness and uh, also uh, maybe on our Thursday show, the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Report, as we go along. Thanks again for being on. That's Jeremy Mayfield. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to kind of stay with the dirt theme, but we're going sprint car racing, blackjack. Brian Brown is going to join us along with Stephen Ovens, our Turn 5 Live Dirt Correspondent here on Motorsports Madness. Stay with us. You are listening to Motorsports Madness on the Performance Motorsports Network. How would you like to win a brand new Corvette? Larry O's got all the details. Enter America's number one dream car giveaway contest at winyournewcar.com. That's right, winyournewcar.com. Complete the puzzle the fastest and win a new Corvette tax-free, delivered to your door. Come on, stop dreaming and start driving with winyournewcar.com. You hear that? That's the sound of America's only sports car. That's right, it's a Corvette. But not just any Corvette. It's your Corvette. It's that who cares if there's traffic part of your day. And this can be you when you come to Cooper Corvettes. With 60 years of Corvettes to choose from, there's always a Corvette in your budget. And they'll service any Corvette you bring in. Cooper Corvettes on Route 1 just north of Quantico and Triangle. Call, click, or visit coopercorvettes.com. Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed. Learn how at www.ready.gov. Brought to you by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Ad Council. On the air, you may know me as the man about motorsports. Actually, I've been the man about insurance for over 30 years. With one call, I can cover your life, health, auto, home, and business insurance. Recently, I saved a young couple over $500 on their annual car insurance bill. No gimmicks and no green lizard. So if you think your insurer is really your good neighbor who is on your side because he is holding your money in his good hands, think again. Call me, 703-631-8000. I have dozens of insurance companies waiting to give you the protection you need and deserve. It may take more than 15 minutes, but you'll receive sound advice, quality professional service, and an honest opinion. That number again, 703-631-8000. As for Larry Did you know that birthday parties help build confidence in kids? Yeah. Did you know that giving kids less sugar before bedtime helps them sleep better? Oh, totally. Did you know that friendly kids have more friends? Everybody knows that. Hey, guys, did you know that most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? I didn't know that. Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right car seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. 
Coming to Tampa Bay, I said we want to win a Super Bowl, and I believe we will. From IamSecond.com. We came close, but never really did win that championship. Former NFL head coach Tony Dungy. At the end of my sixth year, I was fired, and it was one of the biggest disappointments of my life. Next year, I'm in Indianapolis, get to the playoffs, but get knocked out again. And for the next couple of years, it's the same thing. Everyone is saying Colts are never going to win one. And I did wonder why didn't it pan out the way I thought it would. But I determined that I had to have Christ first and that everything else came below that, including my own desires. The next year, that ended up being our year to, to go to the Super Bowl and win it. And it was a wonderful feeling. Every decision I make, I'm going to make it through the lens of Jesus Christ. And he'd guide us to that ultimate victory. Watch Tony's story at IamSecond.com. We now return you to Two and a Half Men on Speed 77 Radio's Motorsports Madness on the Performance Motorsports Network. Oh, dear. that That's actually a scary thought. Uh, but we are back here on the Madness, and that would be an excerpt of Crazy by Tom Baker. So uh, there you go. It's Jacob Seelman. Uh, <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> Jacob Seelman, Tom Baker, and uh, Kyle Magda here at the 77 Roundtable and bringing in our down and dirty expert Steve Ovens to talk world finals. Uh, Steve-O, boy, we had fun at Charlotte, and you were uh, helping us out all the way up from the great state of Maine. We saw Daryl Lanigan. We saw Donnie Schatz win a championship. Uh, boy, we saw an exciting battle in the super dirt cars. And then we saw some first-time World of Outlaws winner. Yeah, we absolutely did. And and I I can't uh, I can't even begin to describe how awesome that uh, the whole weekend was uh, at the World Finals. You had a first-time winner in the world of outlaw sprint cars who we're about to talk to right now and um and just flat out great racing all weekend long it was great racing and we'll talk about why it was great racing in a minute but first want to bring in uh, the man himself who did pick up that victory and that is brian brown joining us here on motorsports madness brian uh, got the chance to talk to you after the race on saturday night but glad to have you here on the air with us uh, again congratulations on the win my friend and uh, ha have the nerves calmed down finally yeah it's you know starting to sink in a little bit more you know there after the races um you know, it was even tough to kind of get an interview with you, and I apologize for that. It was just uh, a lot of people coming over to, to congratulate us. And, uh, you know, winning those races are, are very, very tough, as as I've shown. And, um, you know, you gotta you got to do your job, all, you know, throughout the whole 30 laps. And, you know, you got to pay attention to the way the track changes and the double fall restarts. And um, it's something that uh, we'll never take for granted, you know, our first one. And uh, hopefully we don't have to wait as long, you know, for our second one. But... Back to your question, yeah, it's it's kind of sinking a little bit, and you know the nerves are gone, and we're uh, we're very very proud to uh, to win that World Finals. Oh, I I imagine you are, and I was talking to Johnny Gibson afterwards, and I think he said, uh, I, I think the number he gave me was that you had finished second twenty four times in thirteen years with the Outlaws without winning a race until Saturday night. And it was almost 25 when uh, you had that battle with Darren Pittman there with about three laps to go just before the caution came out. And I know you, you said it to me Saturday night, and I'll say it again because I thought it. Uh, the first thing that crossed my mind was, oh, here we go again. Yeah, you know, um, you know, really the every race we have lost, and I didn't think it was 24, but and if, if that was, that's, that's a lot. And... Um, you know, every race we have lost, you know, whether it be my doing or, or what most of them are my doing, but, um, or my mistakes, I think I've learned something along the way of, you know, how, uh, you know, what I could have been different on a restart or as we got to traffic or even, um, even going in, you know, uh, from, from the time the race, the green, green flag drops, uh, a lot of people think when the green flag drops, you just go as hard as you can for 30 laps. And, you know, if you do that and you're, you'll win. And that's the case sometimes, but there are times too that um, that you have to uh, be patient and, and really take care of your tires. And that was my goal going in, just to, to run as hard as I thought I needed to run to, to keep the lead, and then just make sure my tires were and stuff were good, you know, there towards the end. And um, I felt like I ran a pretty smart race. Um, was able to, uh, 
you know, um, move around when I had to and, you know, stay in line when I had to. And, you know, my restarts are pretty good. And, um, Darren just got going a little bit better on a different part of the track and was able to sneak by us. And um, as soon as he sneaked by, snuck by us there, you know, uh, I felt like, okay, that's fine. we still got a couple laps. I can still try to work on them here. And then the yellow comes out. And I just, uh, you know, really a single fall restart with three to go. Um, you got to make your move quick and you got to make it count. And if you don't, um, you're going to lose. And uh, I knew I had to get a good, good, you know, good start up off of four and not spin my tires and stay with him. And then I was just going to go the opposite direction he was uh, in one and two. And he went to the bottom and I cycled the top and, you know, made a really good corner and uh, got a run on him, you know, was able to, uh, to go by and then just, uh, you know, like the last three laps, just run like I was running from the cops. And um, it was, uh, it all worked out for us. Well, that, that you did, Brian, and and I got to ask, you know, you winning your first World of Outlaws feature would have been enough on its own Saturday night, but to get that win and, and know that that's Steve Kinzer's last full-time feature event, I, I can't imagine what must have been going through your head after the initial... Uh, the initial shock of, of the win and all of the pomp and circumstance and then to, to go back to the pit area and think about this is Steve's last full-time feature event and then to get a, a nice piece of memorabilia from the King as well. Yeah, you know, um, you know, you always say, man, if I could ever win it, I'd like to win it here. Uh, you know, obviously I would say, you know, back just because of where I'm from and where I grew up, obviously if I could pick one place to win my first race, it would have been the Knoxville, Knoxville, not the Knoxville National, but Knoxville Raceway in front of, you know, a lot more of my friends and family because a lot more would go that where that's a lot closer to home. But, um, you know, when you win that, you know, you always think, gosh, it's going to be special and I'm going to, I mean, they're just, everything just kind of overwhelms you, you know, and you're right, you know, I was able to win and, um, you know, we lost a great friend of ours last week, Billy B. And I wanted to say something about him in Victory Lane, and I wanted to say something about Steve Kinzer in Victory Lane. And then it's just like it, you know, you, you get overwhelmed and you forget about the things you wanted to say and you know do or whatnot. But yeah, you know, you get back to the pit area and you think about, wow, we just won an outlaw race on a, on a really really big stage, and it being Steve Kinzer's last full uh, full his last race as a full time outlaw, and then to go down there and have him sign a piece of memorabilia that you got from the outlaws and then him turn around and give me his helmet from the night is, um, gosh, it's like, I was, I was thinking to myself, are we going to win the lottery on the way back to the hotel? You know, it's just, it, it's just unbelievable. I mean, and, and um, I don't know. I, you know, I, this is something that I've dreamed about, um, since I've been a young kid, not just, I just dreamed I'd one day be a sprint car driver and ne- never dreamed I'd make it for a living and never dreamed I would be able to win a world of outlaw race. So, um, you know, it's, it's a dream come true. And, um, to be able to do it on that biggest stage with Steve Kinzer, uh, being with it being Steve Kinzer's last race, uh, as a full-time outlaw and for him to give me that, uh, uh big a piece of history that he thought it meant enough to me to give it to me. And, um, it's just uh, it's hard to even talk about now just because I can't believe his helmet sitting in my office, let alone World Finals trophy and, um, you know, uh, just pretty special. Well, Brian, I know you uh, you certainly can't do it alone. I know you guys have a lot of great uh, sponsors and crew guys that, that travel along with you. We want to give you guys uh, an opportunity to talk about those folks that helped you get there Saturday night. Yeah, you know, we've... Uh, We've been very, very fortunate. I think this is our sixth year of having our own team, and uh, you know, you don't you don't win fourteen races in a year, and you don't win um, outlaw an outlaw race. And the things we do, um, you don't win those in one night. That takes a lot of lot of effort, a lot of preparation, and more importantly, probably a lot of people believing in you. And uh, this is this has been a program we've continued to work on, and you know. Um, Starting with my crew chief Chad Morgan, he's been with me for six years, and uh, Zach Thomas uh, from California came on board as our second crew member this year, and um, you know my grandpa George and Greg and Clem and Snook and guys and Scotty, the guys that come with us when we're in the area, and um, uh, you know, our partners, you know Casey's General Store and SCP, 
Hillsborough Telephone Company, Impact Signs, Awnings, and Wraps, Ditch Field Transfer has been with us from day one, um, Champion Oil, uh, MC Power, Smiley's, Enco, um, TI-64, Weld Wheels, User Tires, Pro Shocks, Built by Sure Built, uh, Vortex Wings, um, you know, all of our, all of our, all of our great partners that, um, you know, Maxim Chassis, you know, with a Charlie Garrett engine. So, uh, I think we've got about 55 different people or different partners on our team, uh, that, that help us in one way or the other. And you don't win outlaw races and you don't, um, you know, you don't win races period without having great support. And, um, I just, uh, can't thank all those people uh, enough along with, you know, my wife, Heather, and all my family, um, for their support. It's, uh, been a pretty unbelievable weekend and something I'll never forget. And, um, like I said, it's, uh, I'll never, ever, ever take, uh, take this race for granted or, you know, any outlaw race. So, um, hopefully the second one won't take as long. Um, but, uh, they can never take, we've won an outlaw race and they can never take that away from us. Back with more motorsports madness after this. You are listening to the show here on the Performance Motorsports Network. How would you like to win a brand new Corvette? Larry O's got all the details. In the Pits Media is proud to present its newest partner, WinYourNewCar.com. That's right, you now can enter the number one American Dream Car Contest giveaway at WinYourNewCar.com. Complete the puzzle the fastest and win a new Corvette tax-free, delivered to your door. Come on, stop dreaming, start driving with WinYourNewCar.com. Car problems? You can trust your local Cotman man. Cotman has a 40-year history as a leader in car repair and making happy, satisfied customers. Whatever's wrong with your car, SUV, or truck, Cotman will check it out free using state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment. Don't take chances with your car. Bring it to Cotman and let your local Cotman man show you why they are America's transmission and total auto care experts. Visit Cotman.com to download money-saving coupons. Cotman. Real service, real fast. You know that phone call is going to come at the worst possible time, right at the end of the game. Fourth quarter, fourth down, and one yard to go. They're piling up, but you can't watch that. you got to get that car off the road. This could have been prevented if you have taken advantage of Cotman's free TransCheck 21. Here's a chance to have us look at your car and head off any problems that could happen that could interrupt that game. Again, it's a free check. Come see us. See Leonard and fine folks at Cotman of Manassas, 9113 Mathis Avenue in Manassas. Give them a call at 703-365-7200. Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed. Learn how at www.ready.gov. Brought to you by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Ad Council. If you're a gearhead, you probably go online to those hot rod superstores, drooling over the chrome and speed goodies until you find just the right item for your muscle car, tuner car, or truck. But what do you do when it comes to fixing the mom mobile? If you're like most do-it-yourselfers, you head to the strip mall parts store and talk to the Do you want fries with that kid behind the counter? Hold on, Bunky! Did you stop to think where those chain stores are getting the parts that you're installing in the vehicle that's used to transport your family everywhere? They get the cheapest suppliers they can find to sell you the parts at bargain prices. Their limited lifetime warranties? What a joke! Remember the last time Mom's car broke down? You heard about that one for weeks. Don't take that chance again. Excelsior Racing has the quality parts you need for your family vehicle. Parts that you can install knowing you're getting the best for your family. Excelsior Racing. Quality parts. Personalized service. Affordable pricing. Fast to you direct. Excelsior Racing. Online at ExcelsiorRacing.com or call 502-909-2034. Hi everybody, this is Getty Lee for RAD. To many of us, drunk driving is something that other people do. Certainly not one of our friends or relatives would do such a thing. When you see someone who's had too much to drink, about to get into a car, urge them to give up the keys and find alternate transportation. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives, you should too. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Hide the kids. It's time to get dirty on Speed 77 Radio's Motorsports Madness. Now here are your hosts, Jacob, Tom, and Kyle with Turn 5 Live's curator of Casa de Pork Shop, Steve Owen. Yeah, we're back here on Motorsports Madness, and Steve O going to rejoin us for more conversation about the World Finals here in just a few minutes. But right now, uh, going to roll into another live interview segment here because we have got uh, newly minted NASCAR Xfinity Series driver for Richard Soldiers Racing in 2015, Brandon Jones on the horn with us. Uh, 
and we've had him on a couple of times. But Brandon, first off, uh, welcome back here uh, to the madness, and glad to have you on with us. Uh, excited to hear about the new deal that you've got for 2015, and I know definitely a big step up for you going forward, signing with the guys at RCR. Yeah, well, you know, first off, it's always a pleasure to be on with you guys. Look forward to it every time. But uh, yeah, next year's gonna be awesome. I'm uh, really looking forward uh, with the opportunity with RCR. It's going to be uh, really cool to see uh, the little tester we got going. Yeah, I, I know it's it's going to be interesting, I think. Uh, what, what are you most looking forward to about this deal for 2015? Because uh, y- you're actually hooking up with uh, one of the guys that you raced against in the K&M Pro Series East, a bunch, Kale Conley over there at RCR. Are you guys going to be, uh, what it looks like, sharing a little bit of time in that 33 next year? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Austin Dillon going to drive it a couple of times and Paul Menard as well. So, I mean, those are, you know, two really good cup drivers right there. And uh, tons of knowledge coming out of that shop and all those guys and having the resources that they do with the, uh, you know, the cup series. That's always uh, some really good people to uh, be connected with for the uh, near future. Brandon, uh, you know, you ran Turner Scott Motorsports for, almost all of the k and season. And then it looked like at Dover, your car looked different. It didn't have that Turner Scott Motorsports logo. I mean, did that kind of thing, thing have, you know, a look into the future and what the deal came to fruition? Uh, I had a little bit to do with it. Uh, you know, everything kind of started going uh, south with, uh, you know, the Turner Scott thing. And I uh, hated that because, you know, we had definitely a, the whole team was, you know, a championship contending team within the whole garage over there. So, hey, that kind of, you know, fell through and everything. But uh, we've known uh, known all those guys from uh, past experiences over there. And so, luckily, they were, uh, you know, able to take us on with having Kale Conley's cars over there. That was uh, pretty cool to be able to run those couple of races, too, I get the points. And you have the two truck starts with, with uh, GMS Racing. Uh, what's it like being over there? Uh, changing teams and, of course, running for for Gallagher Motorsports. Uh, it's been awesome these uh, first two. Uh, obviously, we really didn't get the finishes I think that we deserved out of uh, those. You know, we had some kind of tough luck in the truck series, not a lot of stuff to show for. But uh, you know, both both races were uh, extremely well. I thought Phoenix we had an awesome truck. Uh, just a weird deal with the uh, the lights, the way they kept going off and everything. I was definitely something I've never seen before in a race. But uh, that kind of stuff will happen, I guess. And uh, got to keep moving forward but i think we're gonna have uh you know awesome stuff and hopefully we can be uh you know with them in the future yeah brandon we talked about it a little bit uh at the top of our show during the nascar segment but i want to ask you how much do, how much does events like what happened saturday night at Phoenix or friday night rather at phoenix into saturday morning i guess uh, how much does something like <laughs> that throw your rhythm off as a driver uh, having to stop and start and stop and start or delay and then finally get it going and then have that rash of cautions at the beginning how tough is that on you guys uh, you know, it was a little heartbreaking, honestly, because uh, as soon as we unloaded the truck, uh, Friday, or yeah, Thursday or Friday, I forget when, I think Thursday, uh, we were about a second off the pace uh, the whole time, and to be able to, you know, at the end of that uh, race, have a top five contending truck, picked up two seconds, I think, and during the whole week, and uh, it was awesome, so we knew we had an awesome truck, and everything was going to start cycling out with the pits, but, uh, you know, it was just kind of heartbreaking to see that they were going to call that, you know, after uh, the the last uh, outing there so kind of uh, you know kind of hurts a little bit but uh we we definitely have our heads high and uh, knew that we could uh, get you know top five trucks now looking at this for 2015 obviously you've got a, a part-time deal in the xfinity series with rcr uh, that i would imagine is not all that you're gonna have on your plate uh, are you looking at uh, some truck series starts as well in this uh, with GMS? Are we going to see you uh, back in the K&N East series, or is none of that ironed out and you're just kind of going to kind of see where it falls come February? I think we're just going to kind of see how it falls in place. Uh, you know, I, I, it's looking like we may, you know, be doing a, a lot of races with GMS next year in the truck series and, uh, you know, maybe a little ARCA races as well. So, uh Get on those mile and a half and start experiencing uh, how all the air, you know, moves around on those uh, cars and trucks. And I think that's going to be, uh, you know, really key to uh, once we get in the uh, Xfinity Series and uh, maybe, you know, one day in the Cup Series. 
I know uh, obviously that's one of the goals that you're looking towards. And this season for you, obviously, I know uh, had a lot of ups, had some downs along the way. Uh, now that this season basically over for you uh, after uh, the run at Phoenix and starting to look ahead towards 2015, what do you take away from this season uh, that you could apply uh, now with your new deal for 2015? Well, I think I think racing is probably the most craziest sport in the sense of you know you go from one week you win and you know winning a race and setting a pole to the next week you're twentieth place and you you can't even find speed in the truck so it, yeah. it throws you for a curve you know every weekend almost it's it's crazy it's really hard to get on a roll I feel and keeps it keeps you uh, you know humble and turned around but uh, every year we've learned obviously you learn ton of stuff every year when you uh keep advancing in the series and you learn, you know, how to drive on the new tire or new motor or aero package. So uh, all that stuff, little things like that, that you can, uh, you know, take to next year and keep building off of it. You know, every, I don't think, uh, you know, one person in the cup series, honestly, uh, knows it all or they'd win every race. So uh, everyone's, you know, still learning in this sport, I feel, and uh, they just keep uh, getting better and better. So uh, we'll just keep taking what we learn each year and uh, apply it to the next. I know you've, said all along this year that you've learned a whole lot uh what do you set the goal for yourself as for 2015 uh, going to this part-time xfinity deal looking at the truck series deal where's the bar for you i think uh you know with a couple races that we're looking at running iowa and bristol and things like that uh we got a win at iowa in the K&N series and uh, every race even the truck races uh we've been extremely competitive there so uh, I don't see why not. There shouldn't be a top five to come out of those, you know, couple races or top ten at least coming out of those couple races uh, in the next Fendi series. So, you know, I think uh, Bristol, a couple Cup guys might be in that race, so that'll be a little bit of a challenge. But it also kind of see where we're at, you know, and uh, experience wise, and uh, that'll be uh, pretty cool to see. And before we cut you loose, of course, as always, sponsors, shout outs. No, you can't do it by yourself. Who makes it happen? Definitely. Uh, well, these last two races with GMS, uh, Russell Code Zone Refrigeration came on board, and that's been awesome. You know, uh, unfortunately, like I was saying before, we didn't get the finish that we wanted with those guys, but uh, uh, hopefully we'll uh, get a near future with them and uh, get them up there. It'll be awesome. Well, Brandon, uh, we appreciate you again taking a few minutes to talk with us here on The Madness tonight. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in that Xfinity car in 2015 and uh, looking forward to talking with you uh, here as the season gets ready to kick off. I know uh, you'll be around through the off season. Definitely. It's always a pleasure to be on. Thank you for having me. That's Brandon Jones. We're going to take care of some more business. And when we come back, there's more madness right here on Speed 77 Radio and the Performance Motorsports Network. How would you like to win a brand new Corvette? Larry O's got all the details. WinYourNewCar.com. Enter America's number one dream car giveaway contest at WinYourNewCar.com. Complete the puzzle the fastest and win a new Corvette tax-free. Come on, stop dreaming. Start driving with WinYourNewCar.com. Car problems? You can trust your local Cotman man. Cotman has a 40-year history as a leader in car repair and making happy, satisfied customers. Whatever's wrong with your car, SUV, or truck, Cotman will check it out free using state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment. Don't take chances with your car. Bring it to Cotman and let your local Cotman man show you why they are America's transmission and total auto care experts. Visit Cotman.com to download money-saving coupons. Cotman. Real service, real fast. You know that phone call is going to come at the worst possible time, right at the end of the game. Fourth quarter, fourth down, and one yard to go. They're piling up, but you can't watch that. you got to get that car off the road. This could have been prevented if you have taken advantage of Cotman's free TransCheck 21. Here's a chance to have us look at your car and head off any problems that could happen that could interrupt that game. Again, it's a free check. Come see us. See Leonard and the fine folks at Cotman of Manassas, 9113 Mathis Avenue in Manassas. Give them a call at 703-365-7200. Media sales professionals with agency experience. If you're frustrated with your current position, unrealistic quotas, and inept management, if you're a sales machine and you simply will not take no as an acceptable reply, if you're looking for a rapidly growing company with unlimited sales potential for commissions in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, if you're searching for a high-tech, forward-looking, laid-back, but extremely professional organization who appreciate your skills and dedication. We have your next opportunity. Scorpion Radio Group is building a sales team of self-starters who are motivated. Your imagination is the only limit here. 
Call 717-749-0444 or email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. That's 717-749-0444 and ask for Sue. Hi, this is Yen Scott from Summit Point Cart in Summit Point, West Virginia. If you're looking for a real racing experience on a real racetrack, come out to Summit Point Cart this weekend. For as little as $25, you can get your racing career started. New this year, Summit Point Cart offers the RX250 capable of over 75 miles an hour. We're open every Friday from 5 p.m. till 9 p.m., Saturday from noon till 10 p.m., and Sunday from noon till 9 p.m. For more information, go to our website, Summit Point cart with a k.com or you can call us at 304-725-5270 summit point cart your east coast karting center for 17 years stock car steel has been a leading material supplier to the racing industry now they're also an official motorsports content partner of race chaser online the biggest names in nascar trust stock car steel for all their raw materials such as carbon steel chrome molly dom aluminum plastics and much much more you can't build a race car without the basic materials and stock car steel is the the place to get them. Don't forget to also visit Stock Car Steel's sister company SRI Supplies for racing and industry. SRI is your number one source for all your shop supply needs. Nuts, bolts, rivets, tapes, adhesives, cutting tools, chemicals, body shop supplies, paint shop supplies, lubricants, and more. A well-stocked race shop is a winning race shop and the road to winning begins with three letters SRI. For more information, visit StockCarSteel.com and sri Supplies. Com. You can also find them on Facebook at Stock Car Steel and Aluminum or call either company toll free at 1 888 752 7272. Time to get back to tonight's Motorsports Madness. Here are the only three of a kind that beat the full house Jacob Steelman, Tom Baker, and Kyle Magda. Well, Tom plays cards uh, on Friday night, so I mean, we, we could take that and run with it. Uh, welcome back to Motorsports Madness, where we get a little wild and a little crazy. And Steve Ovens uh, still hanging tough here with us as we're going to get a little bit more down and dirty, talk a little more world finals. Uh, Steve-O, by the way, we talked to Brian Brown a little bit ago. Uh, So we had Daryl Lanigan, who pulled off a brilliant last lap pass, capped off a season by winning a championship uh, and grabbing his 17th victory. And I don't even want to get started about Super Dirt Car. That's your neck of the woods. And I I just had a headache trying to do the math on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right about that. Uh, that was interesting to say the least. Uh, I I am honestly even to right now. I mean, we're days after the event, and and I'm still shocked that Billy Decker actually pulled this off on Saturday night. Uh, Matt Shepard, after qualifications, lost the point lead to Decker uh, going into Friday night's competition, and then. With the run that Shepard had and the lackluster run that Decker had, Shepard took a 20-point lead into Saturday night. But the problem on Saturday night was Matt Shepard's qualifying run for Saturday was no good. They had to start 19th. And and Tom and Jacob both, you guys were boots on the ground. And, and I, I'm going to you know pitch this to you guys. Even though the racing was spectacular at the front of the field, the battles for the lead were incredible, and in the top five, it was still a little bit of a challenge, unless you were Donnie Schatz, to try and huh, pass yeah. 10 or 20 cars to come from the back. So Matt Shepard had a tough road to hoe right from the beginning, and, and he battled hard but just didn't have enough. Well, you're absolutely right, Stephen. We you know, we watched both nights, obviously, and it was almost the exact same scenario, but in reverse on Friday night, it was Shepard being up front Decker starting back farther and Decker just really never got started. I mean, he, he didn't lose any ground, but he didn't really gain any ground. It was kind of a flat deal on Saturday. You know, it, it was, it was kind of the opposite. Shepard just couldn't get started. So, um, you know, coming from the back was a real challenge in that division because there were so many cars that were so close in speed that it was just hard to pass. I mean, it was that, that was a very deep field, and I thought both of those super dirt car races were outstanding. Of course, Stuart Friesen put on a clinic on Friday night because 
He made a tire change before he went out, just before he went out for the feature, put a little stiffer right rear on, and that made a huge difference in his performance as as the race went along. And then Saturday, it looked like Tyler Dipple might get his first win, yes. but bounced off the wall a couple of times, unfortunately, and uh, just opened it up for the doctor to get by, and Danny Johnson got it. But yeah, I want to talk about Shotzi for a minute, Jacob. 25th Holy to 4th. 25th of fourth. He was 25th on lap eight and finished fourth. I mean, that was one of the most amazing sprint car drives I have ever seen at the dirt track at Charlotte. Wow. It, that was incredible. And, and I, and Donnie doesn't make that run. If Carrie Matson doesn't go er, turn left down the back. stretch. <laughs> You know, I, yeah. I don't think that Donnie makes that run unless he's got a little extra motivation behind him. But what a run that was. Yeah, it was definitely a good run for sure. I def- I, I was just awed by watching him drive through the field. You know, uh, all in all, Steve and, and Jacob, what a great weekend this was. I mean, yes. the track conditions were perfect. The new clay they brought in from Ohio, the track prep that the guys from up north did, uh, that was the best racing surface I've ever seen at the dirt track at Charlotte. Yes. And I yes. think yes. it showed in the racing and it drastically cut down on the number of cautions and bad wrecks that we had. Both shows were over just after 10 o'clock and on each night. And I just, and, and the crowd was just absolutely unbelievable. You couldn't have fit, I don't think, five more people on the grounds. It was standing room only both nights. Yeah, exactly. Tom, I've got two words. Bravo, Charlotte. Yeah, they, they really, really were on their game. And, and all three divisions put on great shows and definitely uh, looking forward to next year's, I think, ninth uh, world final at the uh, dirt track at Charlotte. So, Steve Ovens, thanks for uh, coming on with us. And, and uh, again, uh, folks, if you want to hear more about the world final and hear more about dirt track racing, we've got it right here on Performance Motorsports Network tomorrow night at 730. Steve Ovens, Clint Miller, Brad Ovens, all our buds from up north, turn five live right here on Performance Motorsports Network tomorrow night at 730. We will be back with some closing thoughts and some picks for uh, Homestead on the Motorsports Madness show right after these words. You're listening to Motorsports Madness on the Performance Motorsports Network. Hi, this is Yen Scott from Summit Point Kart in Summit Point, West Virginia. If you're looking for a real racing experience on a real racetrack, come out to Summit Point Kart this weekend. For as little as $25, you can get your racing career started. New this year, Summit Point Kart offers the RX250 capable of over 75 miles an hour. We're open every Friday from 5 p.m. till 9 p.m., Saturday from noon till 10 p.m., and Sunday from noon till 9 p.m. For more information, go to our website, summitpointcartwithak.com, or you can call us at 304-725-5270. Summit Point Cart, your East Coast karting center. In the race of everyday life, it's nice to have the green flag, but drivetrain problems are the pets. A fully remanufactured engine, transmission, or differential from Jasper Engines and Transmissions costs less than a new vehicle and comes with a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide transferable warranty. See jasperengines.com for details and get the green flag in your race of everyday life. See the boys at Chandler and Sons Automotive, 45977 Old Ox Road in Sterling. Give them a call, 703-437-7300. Ever hire, never quit. Lofty goals in this age of shoddy quality, corporate indifference, and built-in obsolescence. It's a beacon of light in a crowded field of mediocrity. The way a company is run is an indication of how you, the customer, is going to be treated. You have a lot of choices when you're searching for auto and performance parts online and at the corner parts store. So why should you buy from Excelsior Racing? Because they're simply the best online parts supplier in the business. If you're looking for selection, ease of ordering, cost, and prompt delivery, look no further. If you have a question, our customer service hotline staffed by knowledgeable gearheads like you will ensure that you get what you need to fix or mod your car or truck. With a thousand suppliers, you're guaranteed to get what you need. First time, every time. Excelsior Racing. Excellence on the track. Excellence on the road. Excellence in customer service. Online at ExcelsiorRacing.com or call 502-909-2034. All I wanted to do was just pick up a guitar and sing praise songs from iamsecond.com well when i got to 17 i was playing in after hours bars 
just in a bunch of trouble. Grammy Award winner Michael W. Smith. Smoking that first joint and feeling so guilty about it. From there it was LSD and your compass sort of just like disappeared. I knew where I belonged, I just couldn't get out. I was very depressed. I went on the floor and just began to shake. And I was just weeping, I was weeping. And I just began to cry out for God. 12.30 at night on the linoleum floor of my kitchen, the God of the universe came and wept with me on that floor. I know where my hope lies. It's not being a rock star. I'm a son of the high king of the universe. Watch Michael's story at IamSecond.com. You're listening to Speed 77 Radio on the Performance Motorsports Network. Now back to Jacob, Tom, and Kyle on Motorsports Madness. We're back, and that's a scary thought here on Motorsports Madness. But then we like those kind of thoughts because that's how we roll here at the round table. Jacob Seelman alongside Tom Baker, uh, Kyle Magda, and James Pike, the Aussie, rejoining us because it's time for our uh, race chaser performance picks here before we go off the air tonight. And we get to do it twofold because guess what, boys? It's championship week at Homestead. I'm excited. And Tom, you get to be excited because like I got to for Phoenix, you get to pick first. Oh, wait, that's because Jimmy sucked. <laughs> Yeah, Jimmy sucked. All right, that was that was definitely not his best day. That's for sure. I uh, I think I may have jinxed old JJ a little bit, but uh, hopefully I won't jinx my picks for Homestead. We get to pick the winner of the race here and the champion. That's how this works. So in my mind, I have said all along I believe that the Sprint Cup champion will win. The homestead race so that means i have to pick one of the four i'm taking the number four kevin harvick is going to win homestead and win the championship he's going to be freaky fast and the reason that he's going to step it up is because that man when it comes to big situations like this just seems to find a way to get it done yet. Yeah, well, just like Jimmy Johns, it delivers and he delivers in a hurry. And I, I think Kevin Harvick wins both the race and the title and ends all the speculation about winning or not winning and whatever else that people yeah, are yeah. whining about. So, uh, yeah, uh, Kevin Harvick winner and champion. Magda, you had Junior. He didn't do so red hot. You're next. Winner and champion. Yeah, Junior did not do that good at Phoenix. But uh, you know what they say about Homestead. He had to be high, wide, and handsome to run the race. But uh, we're going to picks. Uh, kicked around this pick a little bit, and uh, I'm going to stay with him, and I've already decided on it. And I'm an, I think we see a new winner in victory lane come Sunday night. First time on the season and first time ever. It will be the 42 of Kyle Larson and for my champion uh, kicking it around. Like I said earlier in the show, I, I said the Penske and the Hendrick camps will be both great mm -hmm. on Sunday. And I'm going to take the number four, Kevin Harvick. I just think that that team has been stout on mile and a half tracks and not to take away from Penske, but just, I think when the time, when the time will be right, I think Kevin Harvick will be the champion uh, come Sunday night. Pikester, uh, you almost beat me. You had Denny Hamlin. Who do you like for uh, victory lane and a championship? Well, I only didn't have Harvick because I decided to respect the competition and the spirit of the sport a little bit and nah. didn't take him along with you. So let's 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 be fair about that. That I thought Harvick was going to dominate as he did, but as far as Homestead goes, there are two, I guess strains of reality in which I see this race playing out for some reason unbeknownst to me. The first is where Kevin Harvick has the dominant car all day long and basically repeats Phoenix en route to a title. The second is where Harvick dominates for a significant portion of the race and then something happens to him and it knocks him out of contention for the win and out of contention for the championship. I'm thinking that the reality lies somewhere in between those two. And, oh, let's go ahead and, you know what, I'll take a flyer on a winner, because I don't necessarily think we're going to have a champion winning the race. I'll say that we get a Roush car in victory lane at Homestead, because Roush cars are historically good here, and Carl Edwards is historically good here. So, I'll take okay. him, and then I'll stick with Logano for the champion. I've been saying that since the chase began. I think... Uh, 
Joey will become a champion and prove that he actually is the best thing since sliced bread, much to the happiness of Martin. <laughs> My turn, and, and I have a feeling I'm going to regret this. I'm going to regret this, but like Tom, I think the champion's going to win the race. And I know I'm going to regret this because there's one person out there listening right now that's going to go, ha, 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 told you. But I hate to admit it, but I think he's right. I'm going to go with the grasshopper and say Denny Hamlin wins the race and the championship. I can't believe I just went there. I can't believe you just went there either. But you know what? It could happen. I just don't think it's going to. Fair I enough, agree, Tom. Fair enough. But we'll see. That's that's what they run the race for, right? And uh, that's uh, what they let us all look either smart or kind of silly up here for. So we'll see how it plays out Sunday. But right now, uh, we're going to see how it plays out right to the checkered flag because we are done here on Motorsports Madness. And what a first show on the Performance Motorsports Network. It it's was. been appreciate it. Uh, Tom, Kyle, James, it's been fun here at the round table. Of course, Stephen and Joel uh, as well helping out tonight. Appreciate our guests, uh, Brandon Jones, Brian Brown, Jeremy Mayfield. Shout outs to them. And Turn 5 Live tomorrow night, 730, right here on the Performance Motorsports Network. Be there, and we'll be back Thursday at 7 for the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show. Until then, keep it off the wall until we meet again, and we'll see you at the racetrack, folks. Good night. You've been listening to Motorsports Madness with the Speed 77 Radio Race Chaser Online crew. Stay tuned to Performance Motorsports Network for more race talk. For the latest motorsports news, visit racechaseronline.com. Motorsports Madness is a copyrighted production of the Performance Motorsports Network, www.performancemotorsportsnetwork.com, a member of the Scorpion Radio Group, Inc., and may not be rebroadcast, replicated, or saved in any media without the explicit written permission of PMN. Check out our Facebook page or our section on the PMN website. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the host, co-host, and guests and do not necessarily reflect those of the management and ownership of either the Performance Motorsports Network or Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated, the advertisers, or the marketing partners. Be listening again next week when the madness returns on Monday night at 7 Eastern. Until then, keep it off the wall and keep the shiny side up.